Business Matters, presented by the Guamanian Magazine. Three decades after the signing of the Compact of Free Association with the United States, the Federated States of Micronesia will soon face crucial decisions that will guide its political and economic future. The, the actual compact assistance comes to an end in the early 20s. So the FSM has to make a decision, you know. Are they going to have enough uh, economic activity to substitute for that? They had a trust fund, but that trust fund is never going to catch up. It's never going to be uh, commensurate with the assistance from the uh, U.S. So they have to make that up in some fashion. So that could be through other donor countries, or it could be a renewed arrangement with the U.S. And so I'm... I'm guessing that there'll be a renewed relationship with the U.S. as the U.S. contemplates its role in this part of the world. The states of Chuuk, Pohnpei, Yap, and Kosrai were among the far-flung islands that made up the old trust territory administered by the U.S. after the last World War. For U.S. strategic planners, they still represent what's called the vast American lake in the western Pacific Ocean, and as Underwood explains, they have clung primarily to America for economic assistance. They're still averse to foreign investment, so as a consequence, they haven't been able to kind of pull themselves up a little bit quickly like the Republic of Palau, and even to some extent the RMI. The RMI has a, uh, you know, it's a little bit more open to foreign investment and has all that ship registry uh, items, which when you go to Madro, the place is hopping with ships. Uh, the FSM is a little averse to that, so they're going to have to have some internal conversations about whether uh, they want to take a few more risks. The FSM is also being wooed by China, which sees the value of developing ties with this strategically important region. As we speak today, there are over 30 students from the FSM who are getting their bachelor's degrees in China. When they're done, they're going to be Chinese speaking and they're going to go back and they're going to be doing something in the FSM. So the dynamics of this, this world situation has changed dramatically so that, you know, while the Chinese are thinking long term, I don't think uh, we on Guam or U.S. planners are thinking very long term because the, it is crucial to maintain a friendly uh, partnership with the uh, Federated States of Micronesia because that's a big hole in the middle of the ocean. It, it seems inconceivable that the uh, United States would allow China to replace it as the biggest influence on these islands. Uh, it seems inconceivable, but it's already happening. So, you know, the nature of public buildings, the nature of uh, assistance. Uh, China has a very robust presence in almost every uh, Pacific Island nation, not just here in the Northern Pacific, but in the South Pacific. And they do that through assistance projects. But despite the attention of world superpowers, the FSM faces economic problems at home, in particular the growing out-migration of its citizens to places like Guam the CNMI, Hawaii, and beyond. Who is leaving? Is it the better prepared ones or the worse prepared ones? And then secondly, is that in the lack of economic development, uh, like I said, like we, we almost hear nothing about uh, people coming from Palau because there's so much economic activity, uh, there's so much uh, vibrancy there. But in the FSM, it doesn't have that same uh, feel to it. So as a consequence, you know, uh, individuals are making a calculated uh, uh, a decision to, to leave when they can uh, with the idea that they're going to go back. Underwood says over time the FSM will need to address how to bring their citizens home. No nation grows economically when your population is in decline. It just doesn't, you know, so... Uh, you know, they have to do something about the migration issue, not just because it, the, the migrants are causing problems or, or may be causing problems in Guam or Hawaii, but it tells us something about what's going on in the FSM. But 30 years later, Underwood says the FSM's Compact of Free Association has been a success. It, it has worked out well for them, and it has uh, given them a new platform from which to deal with their issues. Uh, it's had dramatic impact on us here in Guam. Uh, and uh, there are some lessons to be learned from that. For KUM's Business Matters, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Business Matters, presented by The Guamanian Magazine.